I really hope that the students come out of this course uh, realizing that although this story took place many, many centuries ago, uh, uh, yeah, you know, and, and, and there, might, there must have been a lot of, obviously there are a lot of changes yeah. that have happened in, in the way we live our lives, no doubt, right? No one's denying that. But I really would, would love if the students would um, focus on some of those lessons, on some of those uh, character traits of the oppressors and of Musa as well. Okay. And, and kind of um, think about that deeply and reflect upon it deeply and, and never feel that, that actually that was back then and, and now is different. But actually, if you if you look towards many of the events of now, you can draw so many parallels. I feel like you do a lot, a lot of that, and it's almost like at first when you mention some of these things, like the issue of nationalism, right, or shallow yeah. nationalism. Uh, like at first, it just it, it, like you're presenting it as part of the story, and then it just becomes so clearly apparent as like, oh, these are things that happen today and, and continue yeah. to happen and have happened in the past, even the recent past. Well, that's the beauty of starting with a question. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, we notice something that, that Allah highlights in the story and we ask why, why, why was this highlighted? Yeah. Generally speaking, we notice that there's not an immense amount of detail, generally speaking, in a lot of the stories in the Quran. And so when you come to the story of Musa and you actually find mention of certain details, what that kind of does to you is you're, you're kind of programmed to, to not expect so many of those details. So when one of them is mentioned, you, you really want to ask the question, why is this highlighted? Right. And when you do that, when you get into that process of asking, you know, it just leads into so many other questions as well. When, when Fir'aun tries to talk to, uh, talk to the people and tell them um, that this is their land, Musa, Musa is going to take their land from them. Like, what exactly is he preaching to them? What is he trying to bring out? You know, is there, is there some type of character trait or is there some type of underlying belief that he's trying to kind of stoke the fires? I feel like that he's pushing forth the idea. Or he's trying to drive fear into the hearts of people. Fear, yeah. So, what is the impact that fear has on on a communal level, on a societal level? People you know? give up a lot of their own rights and a lot of their own freedoms. So, giving up rights, giving up freedoms. Yeah. Um, you know, or there's a sort of maintaining their position as slaves. There's a you, you, there's a sort of mental and intellectual paralysis, kind of. Okay. You know where where you stop. Analyzing, you stop thinking critically, you know, because because you're afraid. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's the idea. That there's fear is debilitating. There, there, there's this philosophy where it's hard to be creative and somebody who can um, actively start solving problems. It, it's like the idea that, and this might be a little um, weird, but you don't think about, you know, uh, poetry, mm -hmm. art. Uh, and, and solving problems when you're vomiting. Mm. In that moment, all you care about is like, all right, I don't want to vomit anymore. Mm. Right? It's like that same idea that like uh, situation of like survival mode. Mm. Right? Where it's like you just, or even like, hey, when is my next meal? Right? When somebody's yeah. in a situation where when like they don't care about local politics and things like that when uh, you know if they're in an economic situation where they have to worry about when are they going to eat yeah and I think it's this kind of same scenarios like and I think one of the things that you mentioned in the class is about how even if the pharaoh or the pharaonic system would ease up something they would take it as, oh, there's, it's so great, it's so... Um, doing you a favor. Yeah, doing you a favor, they're so generous. Yeah. When, <laughs> in reality, there's such a, a hu human, right? human rights issue that's, in, uh, that's not being fulfilled. Yeah. I just, you know, it's really important for us to look at these stories and not, not think of them as legends of long, long ago. You know that you just long, long time on. ago in a galaxy far, far away. Like, there's, there's talk of slavery. Does yeah. slavery still exist? Of course there's so. talk of racism. Does racism still exist? Yeah. There's talk of, of individual op oppression and and communal oppression. There's, there's, there's all of these different things that are highlighted in the story. Are, are they still present, or that's all done and, and we're finished with that? We've moved on. Mashallah, we're such an advanced. No, a lot of these same problems, you know. 
different communities are still struggling with them. Yeah. And again, even within our communities, I, I don't think it's wise for us to always think it's somewhere outside. Are there any elements of that behavior that are prevalent in our community right here? Sure. Uh, in our families, in our households? So you know, in our circle of friends, in our, you know? Even that, so, so the point that, you're, that I understand that you're trying to communicate is, it's not about, oh, this is back then. It's not about, oh, look at how they're doing it, but more so for us to reflect on, hey, are we or am I guilty of the very things that are being discussed? Yeah. So it's a self-reflection factor, self-improvement, self-betterment factor that's very clear. And that's what you get when you read and study the Quran. 